Let's go to Carlos in San Antonio. Como estas, Carlos? Good. How are you? Good, man. Life going okay? Uh, been better, but it's going. All it's right. Going. So what's up, dude? Uh, so I am having issues with my family. Uh, I put up some boundaries with them, try to be as clear as possible. It doesn't seem like they're respecting them. And I'm kind of at the point where I'm wondering if it's a relationship I should cut out of my life. Oh, uh, man. So tell me about it. Oh, yeah. How old are uh, you? So, How old are you? Uh, I'm 35. Wow. Okay. 35. All right. So tell me about it. Yeah. So uh, growing up kind of like turbulent household, uh, older brother has some behavioral issues, like a, um, a diagnosed behavioral issue, issues. Uh, family did the best they could. Uh, definitely kind of like had some impact on me with like cops being called to the house constantly, um, yelling, kind of like turbulent household. Uh, fast forward, college, got out of the house, took a little bit of a breather from everybody and realized that it wasn't really a healthy environment where everybody was kind of leaning on me to be the normal kind of grounding mechanism. And I was the child. Yep. I was the youngest person in the house, like good margin. Yeah. Um, and I needed to kind of like not take that weight on. Uh, and fast forward to mid thirties now and older brother has a kid, uh, kind of in this weird co-parenting relationship with my parents, same turbulent activity, but with a child that I kind of see myself in. And I've asked them to kind of like leave me out of that relationship. Like I just, I can't be their, their therapist to talk about how my brother treats my parents, my parents treat my brother. And also kind of like seeing like the same trauma being impacted on a child that I experienced as a kid. Gotcha. So in the nerd world, we call it triangulation. Sounds like you're getting brought in as you're being used by the other two parties as a, as fuel to the fire that they're casting at the other party. Right. So your parents call you to tell you about what your brother's doing and your brother calls you and tells you what your parents are doing. And the whole time you're watching this little child, just thinking, just get at it. Run, 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 run. Right. Yeah. And the same behavioral issues from when I was a kid. So it's like, Oh, they're screaming in the house and they're fighting over. So how does this, how does this impact you? You said you put up some boundaries and, and your family's violating them. What does that mean? So for me, it's like, hey, I can't be your therapist. I don't want to have every conversation we have be about this. And when every time that we get together, it's, oh, why can't you be more involved with us as a family? It's like, because well, it's toxic. And I don't <laughs> really want to go back to where I was when I was 12. Right. Uh, are you married? Do you have kids? Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, so I guess the question I'd want to ask you, man, if we were just, if we were sitting there in San Antonio sharing a meal, I, I would, I would just want to know at 35, why are you still letting your parents have any influence in your life whatsoever at all? Uh, it's more either I have a relationship with them or don't. And but it's except that, except that you've been propping up their emotion, them emotionally for your whole life. And so they don't want a relationship with you. They want to extract and use you. And so it's not you that's giving up this relationship. It's you that keeps going into this predatory. They're trying to take your soul like a Harry Potter dementor. So it's not a matter of, of, of keeping up the relationship. They have, they, 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 they have ended that part. What you have to decide is, do I want to keep showing up in some sort of facade and some sort of mirage where we're all in the same room together, even though I'm not even here because my 12 year old self recognizes this toxicity and he's, we're just disassociated. We checked out and then I got to roll my eyes when dad starts complaining about brother. And then I got to stare at the floor and brother starts complaining about mom. You see what I'm saying? This isn't a relationship. Yeah. And then I guess like the second question is like, how do I kind of like come to terms with like letting go of that? It really, what I'd hope for. It really, really hurts. It really, really hurts. Cause it shouldn't be like this. 
It shouldn't have been like this for a long, long time. And my guess is that you've got a level of exhaustion running underneath your machine because you've been trying to keep this thing held together for your whole life. And 12-year-olds think they can do it. By the time they get to be 35, they realize they can't, but they try anyway. Have you sat down in this, that this thing's over? Yeah, I, I think I've been kind of like mourning it in a way for the past like year or so. Yeah. Here's the two big things you got to do. The first thing is you have to take care of that little boy that's still working. And you've heard me say this on the show a million times and I'll say it a million more. That little 12 year old boy that is still asking the question at the age of 35. Why won't you just be my dad? Why won't you just be my mom? Like, why do I have to do jump through so many hoops and do so much work for y'all to love me? And that kid's, the kid's exhausted and that's not his job. And so you're going to have to, at some point, whether it's, you get with a therapist and go on a rabbit hole with body work and all that kind of stuff, or you sit down and for the next, I don't know, 90 days, once a week, you write that kid a letter. Just say, dear 12 year old Carlos, remember that time fill in the blank. And then brother came home high and dad hit me, hit you. That wasn't your fault. That's because dad, didn't know what he was doing with brother and brother was out of control. And I'm so sorry that no one was there to protect you. Then the next week, dear Carlos, remember that time? I just want you to know. When you become 35, things are going to be different. And then that's the first part of this thing. The second part of this thing, I think is equally, if not more challenging is you're going to have to find new adult relationships to plug into because you cannot do life by yourself. And that's the worst, man. Are you a pretty lonely guy? Uh, no, I've got a pretty strong friend group, but like chosen family. There you go. Um, I would even suggest marking that some sort of event when I say event, I don't mean like renting out a stadium or something, not the Alamo Dome, but I mean like having people over and saying like, henceforth, y'all are my family. And looking people in the eye and saying, I'm going to call you at 2 a.m. when things get sideways. And when I start dating somebody, I'm going to call you. And when I get scared about my future, I'm going to call you, right? Just, just go around the room. But you'll have something that you can go back and mark as the moment. Um, what's your biggest fear about just stopping to return phone calls? Uh, um, also just losing that relationship. It's the only one I've had my entire life. Yeah. Can you objectively see they left you? Yeah. Yeah. Just how unhealthy it's been. Yeah. For whatever it's worth, Carlos, you're worth, <laughs> you're worth relationships that you can pour into. And there's not a bunch of holes in the bottom of the picture. And you're worth relationships that uh, people pour into you. And they don't use you to prop themselves up, but they are with you because you're, they're your friend. But all this angst, man. How about this? What if you just tried it in a graduated way? You said, hey, once a month, I'm, o I'm only going to swing by once a month. And I'm going to stay for 30 minutes. And by the way, let me circle back real quick. Some of your boundaries like, hey, I've told them, I don't want to talk about them all the time. or I don't want to talk about brother all the time. Or I don't want to talk, always be talking about mom and dad. Make your boundaries a little more firm. I will not discuss my brother with you, period. When you choose to start talking about brother, I am going to choose to walk out of the room because you are telling me you no longer want me in here by bringing that up. Hey, brother, I refuse to talk about mom and dad with you anymore. I love you. We can talk about, you know, whatever, sports, we're hanging out, whatever. I'm not, I refuse to talk about this with you, 100%. So every time you bring up mom and dad, that's like you saying, hey, get out of here, Carlos. I don't want to talk to you. So 
there's that. Uh, make those boundaries super firm. But I would slowly start, um, not even slowly. I would rather abruptly start pulling this thing apart. Instead of going over there every week, I'm going to go over once a month. And they're going to give you the, oh, you too good? Why aren't you coming over anymore? We, we miss you. Why aren't you ever here? Yeah, I've got, I've, I was hanging out with my buddies. I've got some stuff at work to do. I don't want to be a part of all of this drama and chaos because um, y'all are, y'all are choosing it to be like this and I'm choosing to not be in this mess. Those conversations will be hard and make no mistake. When you have true, firm, strong boundaries, people will start trying to smash them just to knock them down because they're an affront to other people. Um, hold firm. Hold firm. Little 12 year old Carlos has been waiting for this moment for a long time. And now it's time for 35-year-old Carlos to let that boy go run and play. He's been being an adult for way too long. Let him go. And it's time for you, 35-year-old Carlos, to say, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do next? <laughs>